Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my friend Robert. Uh, thanks for taking some time out of your schedule to no. talk watches with me. No, thank you. We've got some of Robert's collection here on the table. And I, I wanted to talk to you about uh, some of your experiences as a watch fan, where you're at now and where you plan on going in the future. So uh, why don't you run us by a few of your watches here, Robert? Tell me, sure. tell me what you like here. Sure, okay. okay. Uh, well, so first thing, uh, we got to do the wrist wrist check, right? Yes. So yeah. so I have a new acquisition. Um, it is a Datejust 6605. Wow. So uh, kind of an interesting pickup. I, I don't know how it's running yet. So we'll yeah. see. I think that might be a visit to the, uh, to the watchmaker. <laughs> so where did you get that one? Then? So I picked this up locally, uh, just, you know, found a listing or whatever and took, you know, took a chance at it. It's always fun when you, when you go to these, these meet, local meetups or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, I show up and I've got a backpack <laughs> and I've got, you know, strap changing tool and, I have the case back opener for the Rolex cases and things like that. And usually when, when the person sees the backpack come out, they're like, oh, do you do this often? Or <laughs> are you serious? They're you like, know? this guy's a weirdo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're like, what, what's this guy, what's he doing here? So so I take the backpack out and you know I open it up, make yeah. sure that, well, first, you know, I always have to ask and he didn't care. So I opened it up, make sure everything looks good. That's awesome, man. So, so anyways, I picked it up and we'll soon, you know, we'll see how it shakes up. But kind of, it's got that, it's not quite the full engine turned bezel. But, it's kind of hybrid. Yeah, it's kind of a funky little piece, so we'll see. Is that 34? Is yeah, that well, this is a 36. Is it? Yeah, oh, this okay. is a 36 millimeter. It's uh, surprisingly, you know... You know, this just goes to show that I know nothing about older Rolexes. <laughs> I didn't know they did an applied Rolex logo. So I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, like I said, I, I'm still trying to vet it all out. Um, I think there may be a, a redial, but the indices and everything look legit. Yeah. Um, from what I've seen online. The open 9. Exactly, the Open 9 and everything. It would have been really cool to have the roulette wheel. I've had a few uh, Rolexes with the roulette wheel that I, I find kind of fun. Yeah. But So I got to say, that's awesome that you come prepared. You're able to open it up and yeah. you're not going to be taken for a ride no 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 trust <laughs> me i have had numerous deals yeah fall through because and even like when i go out of town because it's fake yeah yeah because it's fake or maybe it's just too busted like i've i've uh i'm trying to think there's been a few where i've tried to do the quick set date yeah and it doesn't, doesn't work, work and little things like that and depending upon how much I want the watch. Like for example, with this, I'm okay with buying it knowing sure. I'm gonna have to send it off to you know get serviced. You get the right price. You're okay with fixing some things. Sure, you? sure. I mean, yeah. you know, that's kind of actually how I got started. You know, with the, not started with watches, but okay. started with like my collection and and getting bigger and nicer things. Gotcha. So uh, let's look at some of your other watches here. So I see a mix of we got modern, we've got vintage. Uh, let's start with your Seikos. Okay, so Seiko, like you, yeah. Seiko is probably my favorite brand. When people <laughs> when, <laughs> when people ask me, because a lot of like so I'm an air traffic controller, and yeah. a lot of people uh, that I work with, I've helped get watches. Gotcha. And a lot of them will come to me and say, you know, I don't have a watch. What should I get? So my, you go say Seiko. Yeah, my first <laughs> my first brand out of the window is is Seiko yeah like that's what I say right from the start and there's so many reasons um, so I, I brought three turtles I brought, I brought four Seikos but we'll talk about the turtles okay um, so the turtle to me is my favorite diver mm -hmm. I've I've tried Almost all of them, kind of like you. I've done the yeah. sumo. I even so I started to dabble in a lot in vintage, mm -hmm. and I did the you know the sixty two moss. I did the sixty one oh five with the asymmetric case. Yeah. I did the sixty one oh five with the eight thousand case. Yeah. I've kind of gone through the whole thing, and I've I've established beyond a shadow of a doubt that the that's turtle, your watch. The turtle is my watch. So I gotta say, do you like the modern turtle or do you like the six three oh nine? I'm torn. <laughs> I'm torn. I, I generally will lean towards the 6309. Okay. And it sounds stupid, but I mean, for people watching, uh -huh. you know, watch guys watching, it's because the lollipop. It's the one thing. I yeah. don't mind the X for the prospects. Mm -hmm. I don't mind anything else, but I wish that the modern 
modern turtle would have moved. Kept the lollipop. Uh, kept, yeah, kept the lollipop over there. Is this one a Sua? So, no, this is this is a, an 84, a non-Sua. It's the, uh, the 7049. And the cool thing about this, so there's a whole story, and I, I told you at the last meetup about mm-hmm. this. So I wanted a birth year watch. I, I started out wanting a speedy birth year. Yeah. And then I was like, eh, and I kind of went back and forth just looking at all sorts of watches. And I ended up on, on the turtle, right? Gotcha. So this one's got a cool story because I bought it and it came from a Navy diver. Really? Yeah, I actually have two. <laughs> I, he sent me two pictures uh, of him using it. Using it. That it's, is so it, awesome. It's got about eight hundred dives with it. My and goodness. I need to get it serviced, uh, but it's all original. That's incredible. Yeah, and you so can, all these marks here. Some of these happened on dives. Yes, yes. This <laughs> this was a Navy diver watch. Was not a, a you know like a fifty five thirteen or yeah. something you know really glamorous a basic Seiko diver. One of the pictures is him in his navy diving suit, and then the other picture is him deep sea fishing, but wearing so this cool. watch. See, that, that's one of the things that that I kind of find a little comical is when I'm on a forum or a watch group or something, and someone says, "Can I get this diver wet? Can I wash yeah. it?" It's like, dude, <laughs> dude, right? You can totally. Right. Take it in water. Not going to be an issue. Right. So so this watch right here, like I said, has 800 dives roughly, roughly. on it. Okay. This is as old as I am and I love it. Right. That's so awesome. So I got a watch that's as old as I am. So then Seiko in 2016 came out with the you know, the, sure. the 777, the yeah. SRP 777. A little bit bigger, but still very much the same DNA. Very much the same DNA. So with this... Um, my wife and I were expecting our third child, my, uh-huh. my first uh, son. So, well, it's my only son. I don't, but <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're expecting our son, and I thought to myself, I had I had just got the eighty four, and now I'm going. Well, wait a second. Let's get my son. Let's get him. <laughs> let's get let's get my son his own birth year watch, and then I'll have the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. So I get the sixteen and. Funny story about that. I had to buy, I think, four turtles because they technically start. They had some roll out in late fifteen. Really. So I actually got some with a fifteen serial. You can't have that. And I couldn't have that. <laughs> and my wife thought I was crazy returning these watches. So I finally tracked one down, and I, I wear it. I gotta ask. Uh, did you go to the trouble of getting the same month birth month? So I tried. Yeah. I really tried, but no. So this one's a March. And he was born in June, same as me. Close enough. Uh, right. So close enough, right? So this one is a July. Uh-huh. It's almost this exact month of mine and his. So then I, I get this and I wear it and I only wear it. And again, this is a Seiko turtle. This is not a date just. It's sure. not a you know Daytona or something fancy. I'm going to pass down to him. But I wanted something that I could wear on special occasions, like his birthday and thing uh-huh. like that. And then I could give it to him and not have any remorse over, like, what happens to this thing. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, what if I handed him a Speedmaster or something like that? <laughs> He's like, I'm going to the pawn shop, guys. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, I'm going to go buy whatever with my buddies. Oh, I can get 20 bucks for this, whatever. Yeah. I, so I wanted something, like, I didn't have to worry about. And also, since you wear it on occasion, like the special occasions... If you're taking family pictures, that's going to be on your wrist and be able to see that. Exactly. And so that's why I put it on the Uncle Seiko. I got the the Z199. Nice. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. So I got that. And again, since since it is like a a special occasion watch, I felt the bracelet was warranted. Yeah. Then I liked it so much. You had to get one. I had to get one of my own, (laughs) right? Yeah. So I got one for myself, my own 777. And... I wear this thing all the time. This uh-huh. is one of my go-tos. If I if I can't decide what I'm going to wear for that day, oftentimes I'll grab the triple seven. Do you still have your uh, SRPC two three? I do. You do. I do. Okay. So so I have other turtles at the house. Again, this is my this is my jam right here. This is <laughs> this is my Seiko among all the other Seikos. But but yes, I have other other turtles at the house. But again. You go for the seven seven. The the triple yeah. seven. I don't know what it is. The simplicity of it. Uh, when I tell people about the turtle, I tell people for a couple hundred bucks, you get yourself a yeah. thing that's bulletproof, in house all the yeah. way. In house all the way. Mm-hmm. It'll last you. 
you know, 36 years almost. And 800 dives. Exactly, right? <laughs> this is a, a professional dive watch, yeah. and it still will run great, you know, with a little bit of maintenance. So did, did the Navy, the, the, the guy you bought this from, did he send it to Seiko to get serviced and gaskets and stuff? Do so, you know? no, he had a local, he had a local guy do nice. it. Um, so I, that, that would have been really cool. I, and I always ask when I buy vintage if they ever have the box and the papers. And generally I get Never. no. Yeah. You know, I, I, bought a, I bought a Rolex off of a uh, Vietnam vet. And I asked him if he had the box and papers. And he actually bought it in Vietnam really? in theater and he says no I was more worried about living you know I wanted a watch Fair that enough. was re- re- was dependable yeah. that it would do me well and he said I threw everything else away I was worried about staying alive and keeping track of time you know so but I always ask the question you never yeah. know and so this time I got the pictures which I thought were kind of cool to kind of add to the story but yeah, yeah I, I very rarely wear this one I will wear the, the 84, but my go-to, if I'm going to grab a turtle, is either the, is, is my 777 or the 2.3. Yeah. See, the 2.3 is one that, because I've owned so many turtles, yeah. and it's one of my favorites as well. But the 2.3, I think that one's my favorite, just because of the color. It's amazing. Yeah. I actually like the dial and everything on that more. Yeah. But there's so many other reasons why. And I think the, the other reasons, the connection. Because you have the two. Yeah, the yeah. connection with my son and all that stuff. I think that's kind of why I gravitate towards the 777. Because awesome. I'm with you. The, the two three is much more, I guess, striking if you just look yeah. at it, you know? It's the like, color scheme of the original first Seiko diver ever. Yes. You know, but done in a turtle. Yes. Pretty cool. 100%. So, yeah, those are my turtles. Uh, I truly love them. I don't think I'll stop buying them. Yeah. You know, I'm already looking at more, you know, the new releases. The, 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 King, the, King, yeah, the, yeah. the King Turtle, the <laughs> Grenade, or whatever you want to call it. I've uh-huh. looked at that one. Uh, so we'll see what my next turtle is going to be. But people think I'm crazy, you know. When, it's not crazy to collect only turtles. It's not. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely love it. And when I can take this, this big, chunky case and I can put it on somebody's wrist that has like a six and a half inch wrist... And it doesn't, I mean, it's a big watch, sure. but it doesn't dwarf their wrist, say, like, even my Black Bay or something. Yeah, it doesn't you know? the same. It doesn't, it doesn't overpower a lot of people's uh, wrists. So you've also got a Citizen here. Yes. That's something that, see, I get the question, too, like you, like, hey, I want to spend some money on a watch. And normally it's a non-watch person saying yep. it. So when they say, I want to spend some money... That doesn't mean money like in watch terms. Right, like, right. We're thinking Tudor, Omega, Rolex, right. but they're thinking like, hey, what can I get for two, three hundred bucks? Yes. And that's always Seiko. And I also recommend some citizens because some guys, they don't want to change batteries. They don't want to worry about magnetism and stuff with automatics. Exactly. So, so it's funny that you mention that because I do the same thing. This watch, my wife and I celebrate our 14th anniversary this year. And she got this for me. That's awesome. So she knew I was into watches. Yeah. Um, at the time, you know, college students or whatever don't necessarily have a huge budget. Right. Uh, but she wanted to get me something nice. And Panda Dial, what more can you say? A Panda yeah. Dial with a little splash of red. It's got an alarm. This watch has served me for, no joke, for 14 years. No issues. Wow. No... Nothing. Like literally <laughs> nothing with this watch in 14 years. I've, as maintenance free as you can yeah, get. Yeah, as maintenance free as you can get. And that was a daily driver for probably five or six years. Really? It like, looks great. Like now I kind of, again, I save it. I don't wear it a whole lot because it means a lot to me. Uh-huh. Um, but no, every once in a while I'll take it. I'll throw it in the window sill at the house. You know, leave it there, charge it up or whatever. And it really... Like you, you can't, can't run. You can't kill it. No, no, you can't kill it. And so that's another one that I do tell people a lot when they're first starting starting in watches. I will kind of point them to a few different citizens and, and kind yeah, of go definitely. from there. Because again, you can't go bad. No. Uh, let's let's go through some of your other watches. Okay. Here. So uh, here's another fun one. Uh, again, like I said, I'm getting into vintage. So here is a Seiko Navigator, uh, worn and wound. I think it was worn and wound. Did a a nice little write up on these. Um, so with my job as an air traffic controller, I do everything in Zulu time at work. Oh, you do? I track, I track it, you know, Zulu time. Um, and so I have a lot of GMTs and when I saw this, like I, I'm drawn to the 8,000 case. So this is somewhat similar to the 6105. Very close. Very close, but it's 
thinner. Uh-huh. It, it is amazing. Yeah. It's so super clean too. So I bought this, and it was basically new old stock. If you look at the back, there's a res- there's a little bit of residue from the case back sticker, a little wow. bit of the blue. <laughs> uh, Chris opened it up yeah. and said this thing has never been m- messed with. It's never really. It does- he says it looks like somebody just put it in a drawer and forgot about it for 50 years. Yeah. You know, and... Chris is our watchmaker, by yeah, the way. Yeah, shout out to Chris. Uh, he's a great guy. Yeah. Um, so he, he looked it up and didn't look like anybody had even touched it's beautiful, it. beautiful, man. So, again, somewhat similar dial to the, the 2.3, the anthracite. Uh, the way it plays with the lights, you can, you know, throw it on a black strap. You can throw it on a brown strap. The, the little brace, pop of red, too. yes, little pop of red and silver there with the bracelet. Um, that bracelet's pretty hard to come by because it, you know, it's so janky. You know the old yeah. stuff. You know these yep. this like really thin press stuff. So um, that's I, I wear that one. I had a blue one. I sold it because I felt like it was a little redundant and it's super rare. So, um, but yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy some vintage Seiko. This is. The between the late mid to late sixties and probably the mid eighties, mm-hmm. you know that's that's your sweet spot. That's my sweet spot, especially the late sixties um, and into the you know the early seventies. But I mean, I do dabble in the eighties. You gonna buy a Pogue one day? So I've owned a few Pogues. Oh, you've had. A, okay. I have. I have. Okay. So I've owned a few of them, and I'll be honest, I love them, but I don't. Really, it's so weird, <laughs> and I don't know what it is about them. I, I just haven't connected like I thought I would. I've, yeah. I've wanted to. Like I said, I've bought a few of them. Um, just never connected yeah. for some reason or another. I like, I like how quirky it is, you know, with the date change, how you press the crown Push in. it in. Yeah, yeah, like that's kind of a fun little feature. Uh-huh. Uh, but in talking with Chris and a few other watchmakers, they say it's kind of a bugger to, to service them. Oh, to get the, the certain parts that you just can't get anymore. Yes, yeah. and so that's also kind of turned me off. Yeah. Because as much as I love to collect, I also have a family, you know, and other things that interest me. Sure. So I can't devote everything to, <laughs> to servicing, you know, a few hundred dollar watches here yeah. and there um, and kind of go from there. What else we got? We got a Black Bay? Yes. So my Black Bay first gen, uh, this has, has a funny story. Um, a lot of the watches that I've, I have in my collection are rebuys. Uh, you know, I, I realize after I get rid of something, there's a reason why I bought it, you know? <laughs> I was drawn to it for some reason. So I've, I've owned all the iterations of the first gen, the red, blue, and, and the blue, and, and I, the whole time I pray, I was like, please, just come out with a black dial, <laughs> or a black bezel. And they finally did, uh-huh. so I buy it, and I love it. But the whole time I was chasing that that ceramic sub. Sure. I was chasing the ceramic sub. And this is nothing like a ceramic no, sub not even, at all. No, not even close. Not even close. So the whole time I'm chasing the sub, you know, I've got speedies and all these other things in the collection. I thought, you know what? No, I've had I've had the pre-ceramic subs. Now I got to get the ceramic. So I sold my black bay, sold the speedy, and kind of got up and I I went and I got the uh, ceramic sub and I love it. To this day, I absolutely love it. But I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. <laughs> yeah. You right? Uh-huh. Uh, and and then I had seen it in the flesh. It wasn't one of those things where you get it and you're like. Well, this is cool, but it's not. No, I thoroughly. It was like after some time. Yeah, I yeah. thoroughly loved the ceramic sub. Loved it, but I realized I didn't love it as much as I loved my Black Bay, my Speedy, and kind of what I had got sure. rid of to get to that point. So See what I back? <laughs> yeah. So and I kicked myself because had I kept it, you know, I could be making some money, right? Big and time. still worn it every day. Yeah. So I sold it, and. I, tr- I searched the entire nation. I was calling dealers all over the place, uh-huh. tracking one down in new condition because I wanted it from the dealer. I yeah. wanted my name on the card. So I found a dealer in Louisiana. He had it on bracelet. He was confident he was one of the last ones in the nation at the, at the time yeah. to have it. And so I bought it and have loved it ever since. Yeah. I absolutely adore this watch. So uh, since this was only made for less than a year, are you going to be tempted in the future? No. Nope. Like, nope. Not nope. even. I don't even want to know nope. how much it's going to nope. be. No. Every once in a while, I will pop on and, and see a price. And it has, you know, risen. Sure. Not as much as the sub. No. Had I kept the sub, I could have made more money. Yeah. So it's not about the money. Again, when I when I see a watch, I, you know, you have to feel it. Yeah. And you, you, you have to. I never buy anything, even if I if I'm kind of unsure about it. I never buy anything unless I think like. 
I might get stuck with this. You know, whether I can't sell it, it, I can't flip it or trade it, whatever. I I can't do it. So I'm drawn to it. Good. Every time (laughs) I look at this in the case, it makes me feel. You're like yes. Yes. I'm so glad. Exactly. So this this won't ever leave. It's got the two eight two four. It's bulletproof. It's inexpensive. And you have the bracelet. And stuff. I have the bracelet. I have the full kit. I've never worn the NATO. Um, I actually bought other Tudor NATO so that I could keep my black perfect perfect in the plastic. Heck yeah. Again, not gonna sell it, but maybe my kids will sell it one day. Yeah, right? it's part of the experience and part of having the kit. Like yes, everything. The full kit. Yeah. Everything. Um, again, thoroughly love this. And then my Speedy. Again, I picked this up uh, actually last year. Uh, I've had these off and on throughout. You know, I, I would sell a Speedmaster and buy my kids a swing set or yeah. something for the backyard, <laughs> knowing full well that I would eventually get another one. But this is your Hesselite version, your your basic Speedy. You kept the sticker on the back too. I, I kept the sticker. Um, and this band, I just put this band on, a Forstner band, is awesome. It's so comfortable. This uh, this guy, I think he's out of Massachusetts. He bought the rights to the brand, uh, the JB Champion brand uh-huh. and has recreated it, but tweaked it ever so slightly for the modern lug width. So he took this and it's catching the speedy you know uh, community by fire. It's an amazing. I've seen a few guys. Do yes, that. it's yeah. amazing, and a few people have stopped me and like, oh, that's a cool band. You know, <laughs> it's kind of a conversation starter. That's always fun. So there's that. Um, this one you'll probably not see too often. This is a pilot's watch. So a guy in Italy. Really. So it's an A13 Alpha. For those pilots out there or people in uh, you know the aviation community, they, they might recognize this. It's a dashboard clock. The A13 Alpha is a dashboard clock that's in, I forget how many different airframes. Okay. And it's super legible. It's super easy to read. And, you know, you set it with the manual wind and everything while you're in the plane. So this guy out of Italy, he's an engineer, a a hobbyist pilot. He spends two years perfecting the A13 in watch form. Wow. It's got, he removed the seconds hand so you don't see the tick tick for the corpse. It's got a, I forget which ETA version in there, but the, the central seconds for the chronograph and everything are super cool. And that's awesome. It's as close, it's as close to the dash, you know, the dash clock as you can get pretty much. There's plenty of pilot's watches, but to get that, it, it's pretty cool. And it's nice because you're an air traffic controller, so you're kind of drawn to the aviation. I, I'm draw, yeah, I'm drawn to tool watches. I like the no dates. I really like no date. Um, I like vintage Seiko. That's kind of where I've evolved my taste to kind of go towards. Uh-huh. You know, I, I bought a, a Weiss field watch. Again, no date. I kind of like the clean lines on the on the case or on the dial. That's kind of what I've evolved to, to like. So as we wrap up the video then, Robert... What's next? What's on the radar for you, right? So, what's on the radar? That is a great question. Um, as probably a lot of your viewers, at yourself, I'm on a Rolex waiting list. <laughs> <laughs> We're never getting off, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I... I uh, oh, I got some news for you, too. Uh-oh. I talked to my friend. He said they're not taking any more names for the Hulk or the Batgirl or any of the big... Because it's already crazy. It's so. crazy. So, yeah, eventually, eventually, I will track down... A Batman, Batgirl, uh-huh. whatever you want to call it. Uh, again, with the GMT, I love it. Um, I kind of went back and forth if I should go back to the, the Hulk or even just grab another sub. But no, I'm going to get the GMT. So that's a far away goal. Yeah. Right? That's going to take me a little bit of time. At some point it will happen. Yes. Um, I don't know. I, I've kind of toyed with getting a, a dedicated dress watch. Something like a Reverso, yeah. maybe a Cartier. You know, I don't. I don't know because I don't necessarily dress up more than like jeans and a shirt kind of a thing. Yeah. So I don't know how much I'm gonna utilize that, and I don't know if I want to spend what that's gonna take. Well, at the same time, I know that the GMT is a sport watch. Yes, but it looks pretty good, especially on Jubilee. Yeah, and the, yeah. on the Jubilee, you know, John. Bruno, if you're looking, <laughs> don't forget about me. <laughs> don't forget about me. Uh, no, on the Jubilee, I think it does dress it up a little bit. Uh-huh. So who knows? Maybe that'll evolve, you know, and I'll, I'll be able to track one of those down. But I think a good dress watch, who knows? Maybe I'll keep the date just. 
you know, this kind of just fell into my lap, so who knows about that. Um, but I think I'm just holding out hope for the, you know, the Batman. You know, I, I've got a, a good spot. You're not itching for a watch. No, no. You've I'm, got great watches. No, I've got, I've got great watches. Are they, you know, high horology? No, but I love them. They make me feel good. You know, they make me feel happy, yeah. right? That's why we're in the hobby. Right? right? And they, I, they've got a connection to my son, my wife, work, whatever the case may be. And I love it. So I'm in a good spot. I'm perfectly content waiting to get the watch that I want to get. Uh -huh. Now, if there's something that pops up, sure, I might, you know. Have some fun. I, you always have to be open because you yeah. never know what's going to fall in your lap. Um, but as of right now, I, I feel pretty content. So let's say Rolex is coming, Basil here. Yeah. They come out with uh, new colors. Yeah. Maybe Coke, maybe black and green. Are you are you Pepsi? Like, oh, I want Pepsi. You know, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. This is how silly I am. I've got my Pepsi GMT in here. Okay. So so if I have if I have to get another GMT, it can't be Pepsi. Okay. Okay. Because I've got my Black Bay. I totally forgot that I had that tucked in there. Um, <laughs> so I've got my Pepsi in there. Coke. Coke, you could do. I'm scared because if I got Coke, I would never wear this. Uh, that's a right? fair point. Right. If I never, if I got the Coke. I would have to, I don't know what I would do with this. I, would, I love this watch. And the value that it, you know, is there. For how much it costs. Yes. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I bought this brand new from a dealer in Texas, uh, walked out the door under four grand, and I'm amazed. Yeah. I'm absolutely amazed. I love this thing. So, yeah, if it was a, if it was a Coke, I would probably pick it up. Um, one thing that I'm kind of hoping for, but I don't think they'll do, is... A tweak to the uh, mill gauss like yeah I, I want the black but I don't want the orange I don't do <laughs> crazy orange I don't do crazy yellows uh, so if they were to do like a black like with a, a retro red, inspired yes inspired yes mil -gauss. if they did the mill gauss in red or something like that I would consider going for something like that over yeah. the GMT just because I have I have plenty of GMTs at the house and things like that so yeah. Um, I'm not itching for a GMT. I, I want one, but you know that could be a good diversion in my collection if, if I could get a, something fun like that. Well, I, I've had a great time talking with you, Robert. This was fun. Yeah, it's fun. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to, to do this and to share some of your experiences here with everyone. Uh, so, uh, yeah. This Thanks, is awesome. Man. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks.